good morning. Win, lose, or go home. Or I'm sorry, win or go home. That's the title of today's show. You know, um, there's been a lot of stuff in the news about uh, racism in the NFL. I mean, really? Because a lot of black coaches have been fired this year. And in their place, they've hired white coaches. See, this is something that has bothered me for forever. Should an NFL team owner be forced to hire someone who won't take their team to the championships simply because of the color of their skin. Now, please, watch the whole show. <clears throat> I get very annoyed with anything having to do with affirmative action. I get annoyed when somebody is hired for something or a, a business owner or Anyone gets something because of something about themselves that they cannot change. I'm a white woman. That's how I was born. Okay? So, I don't want to be hired for any job or get any kind of an award for being a white woman. Because that doesn't mean I'm awesome. It just means I'm a white woman. I am not better than anyone else because I am white or I am a woman. And I feel the same about anybody. A black person didn't choose to be black. Okay? They can't change the color of their skin. That is something that they were born with. It doesn't all of a sudden make them better than someone else for a job, whether it be coaching an NFL team or running a business or being hired or being accepted into college. It's what's in here. And I don't know what the color of my brain is, but I'm assuming the color of my brain is the same color as everybody else's brain. I've never seen my brain outside of my head, and I truly hope I never do. But i got to tell you, it bothers me that I'm wondering, we talk about fake news. And this isn't fake news because it is really a big deal to a lot of people about this NFL coaching thing. But ask the fans. What do the fans want in the NFL? They want to win. They want their team to go to the Super Bowl. <clears throat> and I don't know that the fans care as much about the color of the coach's skin that gets them there. Now, I'm going to tell you something about the NFL that I've always found actually a little offensive. Because every year, if a team doesn't get into the playoffs, they fire the coach. And it doesn't matter what the color of his skin is. And I always say to my husband, um, who is a much bigger fan than I am, I'm like, why are they firing the coach? Because it's the players who screwed up. The players who got the penalties. And believe me, when I do watch football, the penalties make me crazy. If I were a coach, I'd fire those players. Roughing the pass, the pass interference, offsides. The players screw up and the coach pays the price by being fired. I never understood that. So let me just say that. And my husband's like, well, you know, shit goes upwards. It's, it's ultimately the coach's responsibility. He didn't coach them well enough. Well, I'm sorry. You coach a whole bunch of guys. There's like, what, 11 guys on the field. They screw up. It shouldn't be always on the coach. So I always feel bad when a coach is fired, especially after one season, simply because the team didn't get into the playoffs. I think that's a little rude. I think maybe some of these players should be fired. The kickers who miss miss a chip shot for an extra point regularly. That drives me crazy. As a coach, that would drive me crazy. I'd be like, you're fired. I, I hired a kicker, not a soccer player. So I'm just saying. <clears throat> but, you know, we can go back and I just wonder if, you know, it's it's 2019. And our, are we really as racist as 
some of the news stories want to portray us as being, are we really that bad? Because, look, I do see racism. I see it every summer when I go down to my beach place. There's a lot of racism there. It is the only place where I hear the N-word in its full sentence on a regular basis. I don't like it. <clears throat> I tell people I don't like it. I say we don't speak like that in my home, but they do it anyway. So I have seen racism. I have actually, when I voted for Obama, twice. Oh my God, you're voting for that. I don't want a nigger run in my country. How could you as a white woman vote for a black presidential candidate? Well, see, I didn't see a black candidate. I saw the person I thought would be better for the job than the religious zealot Republican who was going to take away a woman's right to choose when and if she gets pregnant and strip my gay friends and family members of their right to love whom they choose in America. That's how I voted. Plus, I did like Obamacare when it first came out. I know I got screwed on that one. But again, I didn't vote for a black candidate. Just like when I voted for Hillary, <clears throat> I didn't vote for a woman. I voted for someone who was a hell of a lot better than the idiot asshole <laughs> Donald Trump. And many people, by the way, who voted for Donald Trump. Uh, my husband just had breakfast with someone over the weekend that said, oh my God, I can't believe I voted for Trump. I am so upset. He's an idiot. Now again, all I'm saying is I didn't vote for Hillary because she was a woman. I would never do that. Again, I am a white woman, but me being a white woman should not get me into anywhere simply because I look like this. Because I didn't make myself look like this. I was born white and I was born a girl. But if I want a job, I should have to work for that job. I should have to study, go to college. You know, I went to school with some black people who are far more successful today than I ever will be. And you know why? It's not because they're black and I'm white. It's because they worked for it. They actually finished college. They actually wanted to work for a living. I didn't. I wanted to be a housewife. I did not want to have a career. They wanted it. They got it. They deserve it because they earned it. <clears throat> they're better than me. <clears throat> but they're not better than me <clears throat> because they're black. Or because they're men. Or because they're black women. They're better than me because they worked harder than I did. And they earned it. And that's what's missing today. It is. We, do, we teach it to our kids that you can coast along and not earn anything and things will just be given to you, handed to you on a silver platter. That's not the way the world works. And no one should be telling a business owner, an NFL team owner, who they can hire because, well, 60% of the league, the players are black, so you got to have a black coach. How about have the best coach? Does it matter the color of the coach's skin if the team wins? What do the fans think? If your team wins with a white coach, is that a bad thing? Or is it a good thing? Would you have rather lost with a black coach? And believe me, I'm not saying the black coach was worse. But if the black coach hasn't proven himself to be able to get your team to the playoffs and into the Super Bowl, and the, the owner of the team says, well, we got to go with a different, we got to hire someone else, someone who can get us where we want to go. Are you going to be really that pissed off? Black fans, are you going to be pissed off if your team gets to the Super Bowl with a white coach? Are you going to care? And if you do, what does that say about you? Really? 
What does it say about any of us? You know, so many people, when there's an election, they say, well, I won't vote for Bernie Sanders because he's Jewish. What? What does him having Jewish have to do about anything? I won't vote for an atheist. Why? Remember the separation church and state? The government cannot force you to practice any religion. The government's supposed to be neutral with religion. <clears throat> it's not a Christian government. It's not a Muslim government. It's not an atheist. It's just government. <clears throat> you know, you want to go to church, you go to church. You don't want to go to church, you stay home and sleep in on Sunday. That's the way our country is supposed to work. But yet there are many, many Americans who will not vote for any candidate who is not a Christian. Some people say they would never vote for a president, a presidential candidate who is not married or who doesn't have children. What does that have to do with his ability to run our country? See, I never vote for a preacher in chief. I vote for a commander in chief. I vote for someone, <clears throat> excuse me, um, I vote for someone whose ideas I agree with marginally. Because again, I never agree with both. I always say I'm more independent than Democrat or Republican. But the Republicans just preach a little too much. They quote the Bible, the Christian Bible, a little too much. And it scares me. It does scare me. Because government isn't supposed to force us to practice any religion that we choose not to practice. They're not supposed to make laws based on the Christian Bible. We have a constitution. That's where our laws come from. If you want to practice the Christianity, the Christian laws, if you don't believe in abortion, then go to church and don't have an abortion. But you don't tell anybody else they can't have one. And you don't ask your representatives in Washington, who can not even get a budget passed, or keep the government open, you don't tell them to tell women like me, I can't have an abortion, or I can't use birth control. And I don't care if you're black, white, green, orange, purple. I won't vote for anybody who tries to be in my bedroom, tell me who I can love, tell me that I, if I have sex, I better be willing to have babies because that's what sex is for. No one's going to do that. So that's how I vote. <coughs> Excuse me. It is really, really cold here. <laughs> and when it's cold, my sinuses go, woo. So at the end of the day, some of this, racism that has blown up in the last couple of years, I do believe is is fake news. It, it's not fake in the fact that it doesn't occur, but it's promoted because it's all you hear about anymore. Like I said, in the summer, I hear the word nigger more than I would like to because where I summer, unfortunately, there are a lot of racist people, people who said, how could you dare as a white person vote for Obama? I said, well, I didn't realize it was a race contest. I thought it was for president. Really? But when I'm here in the wintertime, all the news talks about is everything's about race. If a black candidate loses a race, it's because the black voters were suppressed. Like, black voters will always vote for the black candidate. Now, see, I hope that's not true. I'll tell you why I hope that's not true. Because as a white woman, I voted for a black man for president twice. Because I didn't see the color of Barack Obama's skin. I listened to his words. Okay? I didn't care that he was a man. I listened to his words. To his, his vision for the country going forward. And then I listened to his opponent, who all he did was quote the Bible and say how he was going to ban Planned Parenthood and, and repeal gay marriage laws and nobody should get married if they're gay and put them back in the closet. That kind of shit turns me off. So I didn't see color at the voting booth. 
I saw ideas. I actually watched the debates and I listened. That's how I voted. And yet my white brothers and sisters were like, how could you go against the tribe? What tribe? You people will hardly talk to me at the bay because I dress fancy and I'm skinny and and I'm political and you know you don't I don't like your kids. You barely talk to me, but now I'm voting against the tribe. There is no tribe. I don't belong to a tribe. I belong to me. I make my decisions based on who I think is the best person for the job. I don't care if they go to church. I don't care if they're married. I don't care if they're gay or straight. I certainly don't care what the color of their skin is. And I really hope that black people don't just vote for black candidates because they're black. I'm sorry, that's a waste of a vote. And I don't think you should assume that all black candidates will have your best interest at heart when they get into office. Because we've seen that happen too. They don't. Politicians are politicians. First. And they're white or black. Second. So remember that. Once you become a politician... People seem to change, and it becomes all about politics instead of people. And that includes the people who voted for them, for whatever reason. So again, as far as the NFL goes, I think the fans, who are very boisterous when their team loses, will say, we don't give a shit what color the coach is if we get to the Super Bowl next season. And I have to say I agree. I say that if a black person is the best person for the job, hire them. Kick the white person to the curb. But if a white person happens to be the best person for the job, I don't think it should matter. Oh, you know, I have to have 50% of my employees female. Or else, you know, I'm sexist. What? So what, you're going to hire 50 stupid women instead of 30 smart men and 20 smart women? That's ridiculous. Who would want to throw themselves under the bus by hiring lesser employees simply because of their gender or their color? <clears throat> That's ridiculous. It makes no sense to me. And maybe I'm wearing those rosy colored glasses again that I'm accused of being very naive. I don't know how the world works, but I will say this. If I were going for a job interview right now and the person who was interviewing me had never met me and I had to fill out a pre-application, I would not put my gender down. I would say not available, NA, not applicable. I would not put my race down, not applicable. I certainly wouldn't say religion, not applicable. I would just give my resume, my credentials, what my experience and my education has to offer to the company, and then see what happens. Maybe all interviews should work like that. They should be blind interviews. Just looking at your bona fides, just your resume, not knowing if you're a male, a female, a Christian, a Jew, a Muslim, a Black, a Hispanic, an Asian, just blind. And you just go by the resume. Go by the accomplishments of what the candidate for the job has done. And then you hire them. And after you hire them, it'll be like the voice. When you turn the chair, you meet them. Watch the shock and awe, right? but you've hired them because they were the best person for the job and you didn't even know what they looked like, what the color of their skin was, if they were male or female, because it shouldn't matter. Political Paula, out.